Be advised, mature content ahead. This podcast is brought to you ad-free thanks to the Legion of Demons at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. If you like what you hear, there's much more at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. Join the Legion. That's patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. And now the show. How do you do? Just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to, uh, well, we warn you. Hey, welcome to the Night of the Living podcast brought to you this week by Dog Blogs and Backlinks. <laughs> hey! Dog Blogs and Backlinks. I love their jerky. Oh, Andy, it I'm sorry. Turn sorry. Andy on. How there dare we go. you? I oh, pulled, pushed up the wrong fader for Andy. Yeah, sure, sure. You trying to silence me? Yeah. <laughs> I would not You're be trying silenced. To, <laughs> trying to silence minority voices, Freddie. God damn <laughs> yeah. you. Once We're again. canceled. Kelly just got his glasses. He went yeah, and, grabbed and his I glasses. grabbed I grabbed one of the shitty pairs. Oh no, not the shitty pair! No. Oh, with a wonky arm. Wonky anyway. arms. Golly gee! So uh, we're all wearing glasses now. In today's episode, we're doing the monkey's paw myths and stories. Myths. I mean, stories inspired by the monkey's paw. Right. Um. This week, we're going to be talking about the 1972. Uh, classic Tales from the Crypt. First time I've seen it. Oh, really? Yeah. Woo! It Woo! shocks me we've never done this. You know? Yeah. For all we know, me we too, have. Actually. Just forget, we just probably forgot. Oh, well, Possibly. I would have sworn before we watched it Sunday night that I had not seen it. And then we watched it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've seen this. <laughs> <laughs> we've watched too many movies. Yeah. You've definitely seen bits and pieces of it. That's what Elise yeah. realized, too. Like, she's definitely seen some of it, if not all of it. Right. I've gone into my IMDb like movies I've reviewed and it's an uncomfortably high amount of number like the number is way higher than I Oh, you actually do been. you leave reviews on no, IMDb? So I leave stars. Oh, okay. So it's for my own for the algorithm. I like I like for to find weird like obscure movies and um the best way to do that is to honestly rate shit on IMDb and you will get recommendations of stuff that you did not know exists that was not marketed and you got to go just deep. Weird. Mm. But I love that sort of thing. Yeah, just um, go to Tubi and go to their suggestions. For real. Speaking of Tubi. What a delight. Wednesday, Cabin Girl premiered on Tubi. Yep. Which is our what? buddy John's new John movie. Wagner's Cabin mm-hmm. Cabin Girl? Yep. John it D. Is, Wagner um, presents Cabin Girl. It's a sequel to Tub Girl. It's a Tub no. Girl. <laughs> and you've made that joke on here before. Have I? Oh, oh for <laughs> sure. Have yet to for see the sure. finished film. We saw a test screening of it at Horror Hound Weekend. It was really fun. It was missing a lot of visual effects in the final score. And so, like, for me, especially, like, the final score is always a huge thing that can make a movie completely different. But I, I enjoyed what I saw at the test screening, so I'm really excited to see the polished, finished version. Yep. Yeah, I'm psyched to watch it uh, on, on the Tubi. Yeah, and yeah, stream that shit. It's free. Um, we're we're going to be doing a little thing for John tomorrow night or we're going to be screening, doing a little family and friends screening. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So I get to see the final one. So technically with it, that would hit, that be the world premiere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At his house. We'll roll a red carpet. Yeah. Down what, what, are <laughs> what are you going to wear? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? <laughs> Honestly, every time you watch a new to you movie in your home, it is the world premiere in your home. That's true. That's right. I, I treat it. I like to, Movies are so uh, magical. I like the Give magic a of it pomp all. Pomp and circumstance to yeah. it. They are magic. Um, Patreon, patreon.com slash NOTLP. That's how we do this. Thank you, patrons, for your support. We just uh, released Origins uh, 240, 240 from 2011, where we talked about a movie called Bong of the Dead. Amy reviewed that for straight to video. Bong Rush of the Dead. Roulette. And then uh, we covered, we were doing animation, so we did a Dead Space animated movie. And uh, it was pretty fun. You know, when I'm looking for roulette movies, I like cycle through all of the streaming apps. 
And, you know, something you don't see as much of are like weed movies, weed horror movies. As you used to, you mean? Yeah, I feel like there was a new evil bong every year. Are you upset about that? Well, it's like, is it because it's mostly recreational around here? So people are I mean, like, we don't need these anymore. It's so accepted yeah. now that like, there's no edge to it anymore. Right. It's yeah, not it's, the culture is like bleeding over in a mainstream culture. That's why I think you'd see more. Mm. Well, it'd be like making a, you know, I'm not saying there aren't movies about drinking, but they're true. They're not the same. Like imagine, mm-hmm. cause that's legal. And that was always legal. But like, imagine like a bunch of stoner comedies, but for booze, like it would be very, You'd be mm-hmm. like, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's sadder. So you're like the so great that, Gatsby is like a prohibition era swinging at boozy parties and stuff. But then like now it's just a bunch of people with red solo cups. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're like, oh, it's just the cultural element of the boozing and the tuxedos and the flappers died out when they legalized booze again. And they're just like, yeah, we're just going to do this in our backyard and I'm wearing shorts. We're going to play some cornhole. (laughs) Well, you know, it's probably because like being stoned is not like exciting to watch. Right. It's usually a lot of just eating and staring. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I guess those are like great characters to have on screen. And plus like everybody vapes nowadays. So that's not as exciting as somebody taking a rip from a bong. Right. Right. Or the whole, the whole high times culture was, uh, yeah. The whole, <laughs> yeah, a lot. Do people still have um, flags of weed uh, leaves in their rooms anymore? I'm sure. Do they still do that? Oh yeah. Only now it's like <laughs> soccer moms. Yeah. Like it, it, the, who that's you exactly right? Who you see walking out of the dispensary has changed. Um, Imagine with the Walking Dead. Yeah, I, I blame uh, the Walking Dead becoming so popular that people were like, "What else have I not tried?" So all the people who had never tried horror and really loved it are now like, yeah, let's legalize weed. (laughs) That's it. That's what happened. And now they're like, oh, I'm just going to get high and watch Walking Dead reruns. And that's basically like, that's, uh, hey, that's your average teen, as Billy Joel would say. Yeah, that's probably it. I think we're really, what we are, are sociologists. Mm -hmm. What we notice is societal patterns. And what we have said here today is, I think, entirely accurate. And I won't be taking any questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's 100% What if fair. there's like a new wave of, of uh, stoner group horror movies now? And we're going to have to cover them all because you said there's no more. There's Listen. nothing. Is there an Amityville stoner movie? Oh, I'm sure of it. <laughs> like Amityville Bong or Amityville? There's an Amityville something. porno that we that we saw come up. Oh, oh yeah. It was um shit. What was it? Oh, I'll have to get at least to tell to, to was remind the me. Amityville Hua. <laughs> no, but it was like something stupid. It was like Amityville House of Dicks or like <laughs> the Amityville like come all over the place. I can't remember. Wow. But like, it was something Was it just like Amityville that. XXX? No. Or this yeah, ain't Amity- this ain't Amityville. <laughs> no, it, it no. Amityville Pleasure House. I think it was Amity- a legit, Amity- it, it was Phil. an actual Amityville uh, <laughs> sequel, just I pornographic. Yeah, <laughs> George Lutz fucks. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, all another Patreon thing. Topicana. I'm going to be putting you back in the hot seat this oh, week. Lord, the hot oh, seat. the hot seat. Which just means that I uh, do not have a question no, prepared. Which means that we will yeah. have no preparation. And our last Topicana was a lot of fun. Um, it was. It, we recast Death Becomes Her, and we had a great time with that. Yeah, I like the creative ones a lot. So that might be coming down the pipeline. I don't know. We're gonna see. I saw some good questions that I just haven't settled on. We one. should play like win, lose, or draw. Oh. <laughs> that would be real weird. Dictionary. People do it as listen. a video instead. How can you listen to somebody drawing? That's why you do it as a video. I don't want to be on video. And we set up like so the whole mind. the whole win loser draw set from the old TV show with oh, the couches with the with yes. the big uh, uh, notepad that you have yeah. to flip the pages. weren't the were Let's the American get, Gladiators on win loser draw? I Let's get, get a hold of Bert Convy. I guarantee it. <laughs> sit, boo boo, sit. Good dog. Was it, um, it was like Ubu, wasn't Ubu? it? Yeah, I don't know. It was Ubu. It was Ubu. Boo-boo. Ubu. Boo-boo. 
Uh, I have nothing else for the top of the show that I can think of. Well, you want to talk about that fun movie we saw on Saturday? I would like to mention, yeah, the Dungeon Master. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was great. I'm glad you remembered to say something, Andy, because <laughs> I was like, there was something else. It. We just got together for something we don't get to do as much as I wish we could is uh, just to watch a movie, just to have fun together and watch a movie together. It was up to Freddy. We'd live in a big house all together. Yeah, all honestly, the time. it's true. Yeah. Watch movies. I'd, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd do be like else. misery. Yes. I'd break your legs. Like, <laughs> With a sledgehammer. Mr. Man. Not I'd, my legs. I'd put you on craftmatic adjustable beds. He loves hard. Um, uh, I don't want to be a dirty birdie. <laughs> but we watched, uh, and I always, I like to find stuff that none of us have seen. And in this case, there's this movie called The Dungeon Master from. Or Rage War. Rage War, depending on how you how you know it. And some of you have probably seen it and own the Blu-ray and everything else. But it was totally new to, to all of us. And um, it was a real treat. Well, okay, here's the thing. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with it, but it's so a narrow audience. I don't think people so weird. away think, from I, our generation would really enjoy this. I think our audience, yes, almost to a person, saying. will enjoy yes. it, though. But it's not going to play to... We, it's great to us. Yeah. But yeah. as a movie itself. Oh, no. Like, if you looked at Metacritic, I think this has like an 11 or something. And yeah. I think that's accurate. It's well deserved. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with it. But, but it was fun. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think if, if you're are, a fan oh, of Dark, of, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, bad, uh, um, you go ahead. <laughs> If you're, you're if you're a fan of, of bad, bad, dark bad. Okay, dark if you're a fan bad. of like eighties fantasy Full moon tech features. movies, Full moon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but also if you're just a fan of art, because I think like honestly, an eleven. You like art? That's kind of a slap in the face to the craftsmanship that went into this movie. Honestly, no, that's I, well made. It, it was there yeah. was some craftsmanship to it, sure. but they were part. It didn't make sense. This movie it didn't need to. had no interest no, that's what I'm saying. in this telling you what was going on. I'm not on. like crapping on it. Right. I'm not saying it's not a great movie. I'm just saying it's not a great movie. Yeah. You're you're saying it doesn't fit like the what the typical narrative fantasy yeah. adventure movie is, and it's really not. It's not that. It's it's like seven vignettes, each with a different director, and it features everything from stop motion animation to car chases to God uh, puppetry. It's fucking yeah. insanely cool. But Richard I, Mull. Yeah. But Richard, and, oh, Mull. Richard Mull's performance is so unique and over the top. And you would want to say bad, but I don't think it's bad. I think he's fucking great. Um, I don't know, man. This is like. I, I mean, get, as long as, all that matters is that we enjoyed it. And yeah. um, we can't look at it um, objectively. It's do you, goofy. Do you feel ashamed for enjoying it so no, much? No, I don't. I but, wonder, I, but like, I don't want to like. Make it out more than it is. I don't know, man. This it's really a, blew my you, it's Kelly. A, it's my dicks. It's I got a dirty dick. That's all I'm saying because it knocked my dick in the dirt. In the dirt. Yeah, I, it's not a movie I think you would enjoy so much alone, um, but with friends and some some good time. Yeah, it it it, it took it on nostalgia about bones stuff. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> I, I was I was swept away. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It just floated down the river of delight. And plus, it's only like 80 minutes, too. So yeah, it's, it's short. That's, it's short that's always shit. a plus for me. Yeah. It, it just ends. I yeah. love a movie sometimes. It just ends. It just starts, yeah. too. And that would be the that would be the, the thing that Andy's saying about it not really being like, a, like he can't say it's a good movie because he doesn't recognize it's a movie. It's well, just a good time. That's all it is. Yeah. But <laughs> he won't take it home to mama. Yeah, that's <laughs> all it is. It's just a good time, baby. And that's all you'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want your life. But I, I enthusiastically recommend this movie. Where, um, where did we see it? Like, Tubi. Tubi, man. Tubi's killing it. I'm going to be Tubi. real. Oh, yeah. yeah. I went Speaking through of Tubi. fucking everything, man, today to find a roulette movie. And I'm not finding anything that's like looks fun or exciting or new. And I finally get, I'm like, I guess I'm going to go back to Tubi and almost immediately I find something perfect. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, my straight to video tonight is a Tubi original and this is good. Ooh. Well, we should get into it then. I, you uh, know, they're killing the game right now. Also, I don't want to uh, single out Tubi, but Pluto is killing it too. I mean, both oh, apps yeah, are cool. part of my life. I love free shit. Golly. You have a whole fucking channel that just plays 
uh, uh, cheaters. There's a whole channel that plays cops. Yeah. <laughs> whole American Gladiators channel, whole MST3K Star channel. Star Trek. Anyway, yeah. you got to love it. It is kind of like a nerd's dream to have these resources. Hello, boys and girls. It's time for straight to video Russian roulette. The final call is going to be in the mess hall for the goodbye ceremony. Let's move! Let's move! Let's move! That means you, Tommy. What's my ball, dick face? Good afternoon, campers! Good afternoon, campers! Well, these might be our final moments together this summer at Briarbrook. The fun isn't over yet. Now we all know the story. 42 years ago, Nurse Agatha gets kicked out of Camp Briarbrook. This eerie calm takes over the forest. Now I know we've all been trying to bring this hag back for years. We prick our finger, hold up to the sky, and scream her name. Something fucking horrible has happened. If you can hear me, please meet in the mess hall. Do you think maybe the ritual thing might have caused Lauren? She's not real. That's a reason why Gatha. She would lure the children from their bunks by night collecting their blood in jars that she hung from the trees. I'm telling you, we hunt the hag. All right, screw it. Let's go. Here. Let's try not to die tonight. It's... <laughs> Hey man, don't just you must be keep the car running. Okay. People are dead, you fucking yeah. idiot! You have the faintest idea what you've done. I gotta get the fucking picture! Ah! What does she want? I just let! I get Great song choice for their trailer. Oh, okay. Kelly, oh, sorry. Oh, there oh, you go, Kelly. Again. It's in the movie. Yeah. And uh, so that's probably why it's in the trailer too. They probably uh, paid dearly. Probably that that was where some of that budget went was to license uh, kids in America. So she came from the woods. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was a good movie, man. I like this. Oh, it's definitely recommend. Um, I'm trying to think how to describe this without. So this movie. Uh, takes place in, in the 1980s in that decade um, and it does things to to kind of make you realize that but um, I mean the, the, the costuming is for the most part sort of 80s um, and, and some of the haircuts but it, I didn't realize that they were actually in the 80s for a while Um because it doesn't go out of its way like some of these new 80 things. Now, there are, there are some uh, hot colors here and there, but they don't drench you in pinks and hot neons um, to get the point across. Uh, it's just more about the way they're dressed and the phones. I, I realized what that they, uh, I was like, oh, they're using regular phones. They're in the 80s. And then oh, it turns good. out they are in the eighties. They talk about wham a lot. <laughs> oh, it's all they talked about mostly. Reaganomics. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna let you know this off the top though. It's um it is completely made up of tropes. Mm -hmm. Like it's like no holds barred made up of like you're gonna be like, Oh, that's this movie, that's this movie, that's this movie. Um, but it's good. They do it in a good way. Um, you don't have to, it's, it's kind of a way to get their point across without spending a lot of time on like exposition there. And there is plenty of exposition. It is a longer movie. I can't remember how long it is, but it's not a, it's not a quick in and out. 
Um, but it's not over long either, uh, you know. Uh, so there's definitely Good Foo exposition. Fighter song. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um, it's an hour and forty one minutes. There you go. Thank so you. Kelly, so, it, it, it trusts its audience that we know these tropes already. It doesn't. Spoon well, here's it the great us. thing: if you don't need, if you don't know it, great. Then you're su- then you're extra surprised. Um, but if you're a horror fan, it's like, okay, I see where this is going ish. Um, like the the story of Agatha, as you heard in the trailer, which is the school nurse. Agatha is sort of the Jason Voorhees. monster of the camp. Yeah, it's not. I mean, yes, this is less a slasher. They definitely pull a lot from slashers, but this pulls from all kind of horror. Uh, stuff you would see in the 80s some now but um definitely like a lot of camp tropes um so there's a lot of supernatural stuff too um and uh so you know agatha is the big scary but you don't get a lot about her um and i it's okay like because she's a means to an end what really makes this movie stand out for me um and what really sold it was the acting I thought sold it. I thought the actors, especially for a to be original for what this is, this clearly has almost no budget there. Well, I don't know about no budget, but they could afford Kim Wilde's kids in America, but, um, and a bus. <laughs> it looks, like they, it the looks bus. like they did. It looks like they, you know, they didn't have a lot. There were no big set pieces really, or not yeah. very many. I like um, your idea that uh, buses are going to take up most of the budget. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I don't know how much buses. Bus, I don't know how much buses are. Next biggest line item on the yeah. budget is bus. <laughs> My uncle's uh, band, his family band, traveled in a fucking school bus, like the Partridge family. They had beds in it. Was it, it like converted? Yeah, they didn't have just the chairs in it. Right? No, it had beds and shit. It was just a really weird, um, prisony kind of a vibe. You know who else yeah. lived on a bus? Who? Uh, Andrea Yates. Yeah. She drowned all her kids. <laughs> I don't right. know why that came immediately to mind. No, You're I could like, see oh, it. a bus. And a I'm bus like, could oh, drive. Living on a bus could on a drive. Fucking like, bus. An old school bus. That'd make you turn into something. So is that the first thing you think of when you hear the word bus? Every time. Just Andrea Yates drowning her children. That and. It's dork. Bussy. Mm-hmm. Um, well, keeping those things in mind. Uh, the acting is good. Good. I thought, um, everybody sold, sold their bits. Like there was a lot of humor to this, but it was not what I thought of as a horror comedy. Like everyone was taking it seriously. The parts where they were being humorous, it was, it wasn't like, it it wasn't, um, super self, super self-referential. You know what I mean? It wasn't winking even though it uses a lot of popular tropes, it's not winking at you. It's using them to tell this story and to move you through this narrative. And there's some scary parts. I thought, um, the, uh, really the, the actors are the best thing though. Um, you know, I'm trying to think what else <laughs> it's to okay. say. You're probably, you're probably wondering why, anything. Like why I just realized how strange it probably is that I brought up the bus that, I was just trying to make the point that you don't need a lot of money to have a bus. Yeah, in fact. Before, I was like, school fact, buses, man? You don't need a lot of money. If a lot of kids died that's on that thing, you get them really the cheap. Jesus. <laughs> Freddy. Yeah. So you're gonna, that's where you're going to ask the uh, car salesman, yeah. how many kids died on this? Yeah. I'd be like, why so cheap? <laughs> and they're like, well, you know why it's so cheap. <laughs> like, can you get the carbon scoring out? Yeah, just throw some carpet on it. It's fine. Boba it's Fett fine. incinerated those kids. Anywho, Good. yeah, if you can get a bus and the rights to a go-go song, you can make a movie. Yeah. Well, it's Kim Wilde, but yeah. Um, Kim Wilde specifically, yeah. Sorry. Um, I mean, you don't have to go on if that's your review, Kelly, if you want to wrap it up. Well, I'm trying to remember if there were things I wanted to point out. Like I said, there's Are they some, just kids oh, the, going the, the, after the lady in the thing, in the camp, the, in the place? Well, there's they're older kids. Like, there's, there are kids in it like little like camp age kids but then 
most of the kids are between like 18 and like 25. The, the counselor characters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, what if I uh, could get you a camper and a bangles song, a B-side? Can we make a horror movie? Yeah, but uh, what's that going to run me? Uh, I don't have a big budget. How much you got? Ninety <laughs> percent. That's it. it's one of the few budget. It's okay. a, like one of the Hold few on. producers just makes you open your did, wallet. Did any kids have. die in this camper? Well, a lot of kids. Mm. A lot of kids. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> um, the ki- the the there's some decent kills and gore effects. Noise. Um, again, especially for what this is, like in the hands of anyone else, like if this. And I'm not trying to pick on Shudder because I like a lot of Shudder originals, but I feel like if this movie was a Shudder original, it would be very disappointing and it would be a different thing. Not that they, I just feel like they would go more snarky and, uh, you know, really try to Elevate look it. at the fourth wall. Oh, so you're I saying, you're not saying had you seen the streaming on Shudder, no. you'd feel different. You're saying that Shudder would have, wouldn't have bought this movie because it doesn't fit their more cynical. No, he's saying if it was, Shudder would have made it different. Well, right? I get that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, though. Is, well, you, if, yes. say, they made it from Go, that it would just, the end product would be wildly different if Shudder were involved with it, right? Is what you're saying? That's his feeling. Well, and that kind of, I mean, basically, or, you know, whoever. I know what you mean. They're, they're, um, their content has shifted. And um, modern, I guess, like a lot of these lately. modern slasher types and modern, like, throwback movies tend to go that direction. Um, and I appreciated that this one for the most part didn't and um and the, they played it mostly serious it's just a really good uh really nice balance um between between scary and 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 funny um it's just good go see it go see it <laughs> go <laughs> go buy a ticket Listen, you get out to that pay phone on the corner. You get yourself out of quarter. Yeah. I mean, this isn't the 70s. And you put it in that phone and you dial up movie phone and oh. you find out what time it's playing. And then you go to that theater at that time. You go up to the booth <laughs> and you buy a ticket and then you or, wait in line and then you go see it. Alternatively, you could come to what I'm planning on a series of of tube top tubey nights where everyone comes in tube tops and we watch a new tubey movie. Can we say in inner tubes? This yeah, is a no way spawn gone. This is yeah. just us being silly. Uh, I want all of us to wear tube tops. I mm-hmm. And I want to get a big group photo of everyone in their tube tops. And nothing but tube tops. No bottoms. Done. <laughs> nothing but <laughs> tube tops. <laughs> Done. <laughs> No, tube top for bottoms too. It is so funny how <laughs> I originally skirts. I originally took yes. your comment, Kelly, about Shutter as being when you go to Shutter <laughs> to watch something, you're you are ready for a different movie. <laughs> like I thought you were saying, you, the experience. It's very like Schrodinger's cat or like oh, a double blind study where they're like, well, how does seeing something on Shutter affect the perception of feel? what the audience is seeing? You know what I mean? I like see. they're like, is I this do. consistent with Shutter's brand? And like instead. Y- now I understand what you're saying, but it is funny how different. So funny. The point that I thought you were making was so different than what you, you were really such saying. You were silly, silly dude. I'm just different, you know? I'm <laughs> not like other People girls. People are different, like you always say. Mm-hmm. No, but seriously, uh, I do feel differently settling in for a Tubi movie though, than I feel settling in for a Shutter movie. My expectations are different. I don't know if they're paying more or if they're more like, it's just a Precise. different vibe. It's a different vibe. Vibe is different. It's a different vibe. And that's okay. Yeah. It just wouldn't hit different. Uh, that's my review. Uh, I think some of you will enjoy this movie. Cool, Thank man. you, Kelly. You're welcome. All right. The movie for next week. It's on Tubi. So wear your tube top. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Play Dead. Chloe fakes her own death to steal evidence from a morgue. The coroner goofball. uses the huh? She's such a she's such a goofball. That such Chloe. a goofball. <laughs> the coroner uses the morgue as a front for a sick and twisted business. A scary game of count and mouse ensues as Chloe learns more about the dead than she bargains for. Starring 
Jerry O'Connell as the coroner. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously. Oh. I hope he does his Austin Powers character. Sliders. Is that why you picked it? Because of yeah. your, your sliders? The minute I saw, well, first of all, I'm a sucker for like morgue movies and like. Yeah, this, this sounds fun. You want, yeah. more, you want more of them, don't you? I want more morgue mo- movies. <laughs> It is. It's like a forbidden place that you know one day you have to go there. And then you know it's like haunted so it, and shit. But so it, it's like, yeah, it feels naughty yeah, to watch them. Is your favorite movie. actor Morgan Freeman? <laughs> yeah. Or Morgan Fairchild? Uh, yes, both of them. Uh, um, it's Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Mm. Oh. Yeah, nothing but listen, Morgan Whalen. Y'all is dark. Yeah, you love country, Humor's you? dark. Anyway, um, Jerry O'Connell is in this movie. It's Charlie O'Connell in it. <laughs> Is the question. Are and you ready to spin not. the wheel? Yeah. Here we go. Spin that spear. It's spinning. Oh, dear. Uh, no. Oh, my. I'm sorry I took this from oh, you, Amy. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's okay. I can watch it if I want. <laughs> you, you have enough, Jer- Ed O'Connell. We still got a season and a half of sliders to get through, y'all. Yeah. yeah you can't watch a TV show and a movie's in. That's just too much O'Connell. Freddie's <laughs> trying to slow down, but I'm like, dude, we're almost there. I know. Well, the thing is, <laughs> like, I'm, finish line. I have a little bit of slider fatigue. It's bad. Uh, I've slid too much. I have slider, <laughs> slider syndrome. Yeah. Well, in an R2 universe, there's nothing uh, but sliders on TV. <laughs> yeah. Let's just switch over to back to Stargate for a little while. We did get to a good sliders episode, though. That's why I wouldn't. Like, when we finished the last one we watched, was that the Cro Mag? I don't know. Uh, I don't want to talk. We don't need to talk about There's this. like a half breed Cro Mag baby. <laughs> the breeding. They finally <laughs> tracked down the Cro Mag breeding camps. And that is my share that's all i can do because they kidnap wade y'all all right we're Early done on then nobody's like they don't ask about wade every episode let's move on it's like they're like fuck you wade that's too much work <laughs> <laughs> Bother me. I love that they just used Takata and Fugue for the theme to the movie. Do you uh, love that? Yeah, this is Freddie Francis's uh, Amicus Studio adaptation of the comic Tales from the Crypt. Need to push Kelly up. Oh shit, man! Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! I got my my muscle memory is is oh, set to man. the wrong channel for when someone's on Zoom. You can do so, it, honey. So sometimes I forget to slide that. You can up. do it. It's a fourth wall, but Kelly, you pick this. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I used to, I watched this movie quite a bit when I was young, a young teenager type. Um, <laughs> it used to be on, uh, 64, quite a bit. Channel 64. WSTR. Basement tapes. Oh, I believe yeah. it was the first place I saw this as with many of the movies we've reviewed here. That was if Eddie Fingers, kid, right? Eddie Fingers basement tapes. Although they could, I. Uh, I I guess I can't remember if they did it after he stopped doing it. But was he on EBN? Yeah, yeah. he was a local DJ and and he was a movie host. I did. I, I had no I had idea. No idea. I never saw that. 
it's so funny. Um, like they're only a couple years older than us, but our experiences are totally different. Well, you were both in, in terms of pop culture. Stuff well, I didn't too, move I to Cincinnati until I was yeah. twelve. So, and what think about what Kelly and I were really into at that age, and what you guys were really into yeah. at that age. But we watched the same channels, sixty four and forty eight. You probably turned it off I mean, when Eddie Figures came on, though. You're yeah, like, probably. <laughs> it's like Wayne's World, yeah. but with movies. Mm. That was uh, 10, 10 p.m. on Saturday nights uh, yeah. on Channel 64. So was he like a horror host a little bit? He did uh, all kinds of movies. Uh, he uh, Yeah, it, did, it was B movies. He was he was just himself. Mm. He was just Eddie Fingers uh, from WEBN. Here's a crazy bad movie or B movie. Uh, and he would give a little bits of trivia. So, yeah, he, he horror hosted, but like it was very low effort. Not his well, given name, so. right? Well, that, what a fun fact! I never had new, never had no idea about that. Thank you, fun Kelly fact. and Freddie. You're very welcome. I try to bring fun everywhere I go, and you do a and great that job. A fact. Thank you so much. Um, I think there's some Eddie Fingers, not a lot, but I think there's a little bit of stuff on YouTube that I, at least one uh-huh. video. Yeah, I forgot about a couple of the um, segments in this. I I really remembered. I didn't even remember that this is where the Santa Claus episode came from. Yeah, and then you you uh, hit me back to that. Well, it starts um, in the comic. Like all of these are from the comic. Every one of them, in this yeah. movie. But uh, and, it's funny. I'd forgotten about the story that is the one that you were like, we should do it because of this story. I forgot that was in this movie completely. Oh yeah, that was the one. The, the last two are the ones that really are the ones that stuck out in my brain. Um, but it's such a it's just a cool. It's just uh, a classic anthology. It's so I cozy. Liked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Amicus and Anthology. Yeah. You got me. AA. <laughs> it's yeah. true. And Peter Andy's Cushing. Joining AA. If you look at watch now, you just watch Scott Ackerman age into Peter Cushing, <laughs> Why, and you will see it <laughs> mostly in this movie. I, I see it. I can totally see where you're going with that, man. Yeah, Scott Ackerman looks so much like Peter Cushing now, as he's aged. It's really wild. So the. It's funny how I didn't question it at first. You know, the movie starts and everybody's just kind of walking through what looks like an underground crypt. And there's Joan Collins and a bunch of other old white British men. And um, they're like following a dude, an older man through the crypt or whatever. And they come into this big cavern and they sit down. And then this dude is in like a monk robe. And then he's like, you're all here because of stuff. And it didn't even occur to me to question that they were dead the whole time until ridiculously long into it oh really you didn't like i'm not bright no you are i'm just shocked that you didn't but i I mean i eventually got there obviously but because this is not the only film that is amicus released that is structured identically to this right okay amy when did you figure out the uh twist not twist that they're dead but you know the uh reveal that they're dead probably like three or four in Uh, i don't know it should have this immediately crypt- occurred to me. So this crypt keeper was not a quip keeper. He, no, no quips. he was very serious. He was, he was frankly boring. And the crypts are very, this crypt is pretty creepy. I ain't, yeah, I ain't into creeping every crypt that I'm meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's Aww. how creepy these crypts were. They're one of my favorite songs of all I love, time. I love that story. Shaker. The, the room where he's talking about the stories with that skull thing in the background it's yeah yeah giant stone skull behind him that was pretty cool if you're by the way it was kelly you i think would love this series i don't know if you've watched um have you watched thriller the 70s anthology oh, series yeah. Uh, yeah, i I've feel like that. that is the closest thing to these amicus anthology movies it's so good but I, sure. I i burned through every episode of it and now i'm, I'm thinking about starting it over again because i liked it so much but uh, very, very similar vibe. Uh, this one kicks off with and all through the house. That's the Joan Collins story. And I love this touch that she drops that brooch. Yeah. While they're heading into the crypt, which is the gift that her husband gives her. So that's an immediate clue that like, wait a minute. First, the guy's like, tell me where you're going after this. And she's like, well, I'm going to go to my husband and it's Christmas and blah, blah. But you're like, wait a minute. She's wearing the brooch that she gets in the story. I should have immediately. That's the first clue. Yeah. You know, so, so this is in most people our age, I think, are familiar with this from the TV series. Like you're saying, Kelly, like, yeah, yeah, I forgot that episode of the series, I think, is a lot better. 
But of course, it's yes. an hour long. It's it's not you know as, as short. But Larry Drake is a way scarier Santa Claus than that Santa Claus. Oh, he was scary. I love well, this tonally. They handle it so different. This one's yeah. All the stories in this one, the uh, Tales from the Dead, nineteen seventy two. They're so quiet and like simple, and that's mm-hmm. what I like about it. It doesn't like beat you over the head with the horror. I yeah. felt watching it like she thinks she thought of everything. Yep. But even if a madman dressed as Santa Claus hadn't shown up, bitch, you did not. Now, wait a minute, Amy. It was the 70s. They didn't have like DNA and shit. Like, I get it. But she just like wiped down the poker that was coated in her husband's blood with a little bit of paper towel and then set it down. Well, this, this is, I said while we were watching this, I was like, well, this only works because it's the 1970s and cops don't check for anything back right. then. I was like, if this was now, just the fact that she scrubbed anything would immediately like be considered evidence against her like yeah yeah it's so cruel when she, you, you don't know how, what this guy is like he could be a right. monster right but he he is kind of like adorably all happy for christmas and he's got a little gift for her and it says how much he loves her the best wife in the world and i would say freddie because this is a tales from the crypt i would say that you can assume that this guy is at a heart of gold that he has to because of the contrast the morality thing yeah. Yeah. Well, I can see, like, it's because they don't fit together. He's like this old, I'm yeah. telling you, old this man, is, and she's like, this, this is this a hot, second marriage. It's Hati Tati girl. This is a second marriage trophy wife. Yeah. That's why the daughter's so young and he's yeah, so that's old. why you know, mm-hmm. I get She wants the, the money. She mm-hmm. is gold digging. And so um, I love the wish. What a sexy time for ladies. Yes. I just love the look of her. In the house, too. Yeah. Like, her costuming, yeah. the house, his costuming, actually, the, the fireplace, the staging oh, of it is, is yeah, perfect. There's, there's something about British Christmases I love. Mm-hmm. It just yeah. seems so cozy and um, primitive in, in a way. <laughs> now, did you hear that, Brits? It's fucking primitive. <laughs> like, it seems more pure. It <laughs> yeah. seems like like what you imagine the fairy tale I mean, Christmas Like, just is. the idea of yeah. uh, these British people pulling their crackers and putting their little heck crank. Uh, crowns on yeah and just being satisfied with like a gift of a pen or something yeah do you pull your cracker yeah. <laughs> uh you know what's funny is that and all through <laughs> the house the, the you know after 72 and this with joan collins the, the tv version was in 89 and it was the second episode of the series and it was directed by robert zemeckis who directed uh, see, I, death becomes i Her. always i always thought it was episode one also yeah i, so I, I, did, I did too it, the episode one is the man who would be death or whatever the one with william sadler is the executioner it's so good though but yeah. um and it's all through the house good. is really like the penultimate yeah. tales from the crypt episode penultimate so penultimate. something is better than it doesn't penultimate mean that it's the top to be no top? penultimate is the one before the ultimate right Okay, everybody. Uh, it's just a really nice pen. That's what it means. So I'm gonna say ultimate. I'm just gonna say ultimate because now I, I'm really confused. But no, it's not my favorite Tales from the Crypt episode, but it is the most quintessentially Tales from the Crypt. Episode. Second to last. Thank you. Second to last. Or like you know, like the ultimate. Second to the last to the the greatest thing. And oh, ultimate. So it's number two. It's a silver medal. I just said that. No, you said second to last. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that would be last place, second to last place. Anyway, you were using the word incorrectly, and he meant ultimate. Go on. That would be like not even a bronze. All right, have okay. we talked about this one yet? Uh, Enough? And all through the house, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love, the, what do you think yeah, of the difference in the nice. design of of the Santa Claus is really drastically much more when they do this for the TV series? Is this Larry, is it Larry, not Larry Hagman. It's Larry Drake. Larry Drake. Uh, he was much scarier. Who, yeah, who, oh, yeah, and also is kind of they did a lot more makeup work on him. And this the guy just looks kind of like a, a, you know, he just came off the street. Yeah. Um, well, it's just apples and oranges. It's which are, show. What kind of like horror you like? Something they both work. Yeah, yeah. they both work, but it's just um, different ways. I feel like this one felt more real. Yeah. I, I, it, yeah. I like how well it was all light. It wasn't like dark and gloomy. Yeah, there wasn't like any. in the the TV series. It's all very bright. Yeah, and there's ve- like both both episodes. There's very little dialogue, but I just love the most. What you hear is like these old timey Christmas carols just playing in the background. Oh yeah, it just <laughs> like it set a really timey. creepy mood. Mm. Yeah. Then uh, you have Reflection of Death, which is the second story, and this came from Tales from the Crypt number twenty three. This one was weak. 
You know what though? This is the weakest for me. This is the most horrific one though. I think it just doesn't really like. Which one was this? I forgot. The it's guy who's leaving his wife. Oh, the the and kids. The premonition. This is also the, weakest yeah. for me as well. Yeah. Story wise, definitely weakest. I mean, still interesting, but just it it reads kind better. Of petered out for me well, in the in no the comic. Le- there's no like yeah. no lesson or anything like morality tale in he this just, one. He just got immediate instant well, karma is gonna get yeah. you. Well, I mean, he, it was for being an adulterer. That was the morality. It was it, supposed to be his punishment. It was less about, like, leave your wife, whatever, but, like, leave your kids? Yeah. Just take the fuck off? Oh, wow. I, I mean, I'm more, not saying, yeah. like, leave your life, wife, whatever. I just mean, like, that's a less of an yeah. egregious thing to me. I was just more confused about the aftermath of the accident where um, his mistress is blind but totally unscathed otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I what wonder a, if she was ejected because he burned up. Yeah, but what a very localized uh, accident See, on her part. Because yeah. <laughs> she's still beautiful yeah. and everything. Like she's, she's not saying, Nothing's changed besides of her except that she's blind now. Did If you remade it, would you give her a, t- a sexy little scar <laughs> somewhere? Just a tiny little scar. That's the only thing you'd change. Uh, a streak of gray yeah. hair in her, dar- uh, in her dark hair because that always indicates I've been through some mm. shit. But this, even yeah. though this is maybe the weakest installment, it's super EC. Like, had they not included this, this is such a, the idea of you are dead, but you don't know it, and the reveal of it being a big reveal of your image somehow down the line or that you're rotting. And, like, yeah. I love that. I do wish there had been some other, there could have been other moments, like something falling off of his body or something, a but, wound he could have found or something that he could have amped it up. I was just confused of why he came back to life. Yeah. I don't know if it was supposed to be like the anniversary or something. Cause that it, was that exactly. It just kind of it happened. Was just, it was yeah. just a lead up to say like, Oh, yeah. I'm dead. Yeah. There's yeah. a like, reason why he's alive again. Yeah. It's literally just to put across the concept. It's not even so much a story as like, and they used to do this, on um night gallery where they would have these little remember the little short episodes they would do that were literally like a joke where it's like dracula at the dentist yeah it's like here's more horror but it's not a story it's just a little more horror while you're waiting for us we're cooking up back here (laughs) we're back here cooking up a whole mess of new horror for you if you could just watch this bit where (laughs) this werewolf goes to a dog groomer and we're gonna be right back with some legit stuff. So I like it in that respect because it, it feels part of the anthology storytelling tradition to me. Yeah. No, we well, like yeah. it's, it's fine. Yeah, it, there's a yeah. reason why they stuck it in the middle because yeah. it was it's not one of the best ones. Yeah. yeah. But I think if you cut it out, you miss it. Yeah. What was the third one? The third one was Poetic Justice, which is the one uh, with the, the blind man. Oh, God. Uh, or, I mean, Peter the, Cushing. I didn't mean the blind man. I meant Peter Cushing. The, 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 yeah, the the the, uh, the the rubbish man. Yeah, the Grimsdyke. Yeah. Best Grimsdyke. name ever. Crazy. The most okay. evil neighbor. He was so sweet. Yeah. Peter had, Cushing played such a darling old man, and he made me this, so sad. This one hurt. Yes. Was, yeah. yeah. Like, this one and the monkey's paw one, it, it kind of bothered me. It was like a, little, a little bit mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, just seeing sweet little Peter Cushing suffer... Through all these grievances, they took his dogs. Well, and that uh, that that guy, that neighbor, that was like some kind of sociopath, man. An that asshole, guy, like rel- relentless to the end. And also, I didn't feel the punishment it was equal to what he put through Peter Cushing through. Oh, right, yeah. I oh. just felt it should have been more drawn out and more like um, he should have suffered more than just having just a been buried yeah. up to his neck in sand on yeah, the beach. Something like that. It was, he does go to hell at the end. True. Yeah, that is true. But still like, just, yeah, good point. Just because the neighbors are like, I have to look across the street at his house and I don't like the way it is. Yeah. And it's, you know, what's wrong with this guy? He loves dogs and children too much. Yeah. So here's the implication. Uh, you don't want to be around him. He's a weird old man. You uh, take your kids away from him, and then the kids can't hang out with him. Well, they, and the kids are saying he's they, a widower. They took the dogs away first. That he was the cruelest dinner. part. He's, he's like, they're my dinner. friends. Staring at a picture and talking to a picture of his wife. Yeah, yeah. I can't. It's almost it all. It is almost to the uh, comical tipping point of well, sad, true, where it's almost like the Simpsons. Uh, someone says something oh. about a hot meal, you know. <laughs> it's in that it ballpark. Just his, the way he reacts to all the things that happen to him yeah. when he's reading those 
Valentine. It's a mean vibe. He's like, oh, he's, it's like, that's oh, not very man. nice. <laughs> that me. was hardcore. The Valentine. Yeah, it's so just, I forgot all about this. That's why, like, it was a good story, but just seeing him go through so much, yeah. it, it kind of like, oh, God, what next? <laughs> yeah, it was the mean. It, they were the most absurd, like, high schoolish kind of things that the way he wanted to get at him to send him for no mean Valentine's. Like, for no oh. reason. Like I, I just to get him kicked out of his house. Like, or I kill thought him. he was trying to get him out because he wanted the property or something. Yeah, that's what they they were gonna do. Oh, they're they're doing. They're okay. gonna buy the property. Okay. Yeah, but he it was it, 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 making it. him commit suicide. But he got revenge. Elsa farted in here because she wants to buy the room. What? Elsa's trying to drive us out. <laughs> <laughs> that's so mean, Elsa. Kelly, you should be glad you did remote today because this is I something feel, special. We're Peter Cushing right now. I am. Elsa like waits for me you. Neighbors. You guys be trapped in here and she goes to town. Dog farts. What are you going to oh. do? What are you going to do? Um, smell them. I do love the finale of this one though, even though it's it may be too succinct, you know, for what the guy deserves. But I love that it he sends that, that fucking Valentine with the real heart in it still beating. Still beating. And as he, if. in the build up to it, the written in blood on the on there is, you know, he gets to something that rhymes with heart. And then he's like, Well, I wonder what's under this flap. <laughs> Fucking heart. That's what. Yeah. No heart. surprise. No surprises here. No clever wordplay. Just a heart. Just a heart. Um, which is another very definitive EC moment, I think, in the movie. Yeah. Like for me, the definitive EC moments are the guy looking into the the mirrored coffee table in the last segment we were talking about. It's always the reveal. What would be just a jump scare in any other story is the way most tales from great tales from the crypt stories end. It's on mm -hmm. a jump scare, <laughs> yeah, of some kind. Um. So is the next one the one with the monkey's paw? Yeah. This the is wish you were here. Yeah, yeah, wish you were here. And like, this is the other one I had a little bit of trouble with, just because. Um, the end where he's suffering for all eternity mm -hmm. just for being yeah. a mean businessman. Like I'm not a big fan of fat cats and uh, these rich people, but and he's a capitalist. Just, and he's a capitalist. <laughs> it's I don't feel it fit the his crime of being greedy. You want to know what that is? That's them having to fit it in his wraparound <laughs> because they chose that to be the reason everybody was brought together as they were going to hell. So they make him bad. Because otherwise, yeah. this is just a story from the comic book yeah. that didn't have that excuse, you know. But to suffer all eternity and <laughs> yeah, to to uh, feel the embalming fluid burning you and Ooh. being cut up in pieces, it was pretty rough. First of all, you're which also doesn't make sense why he's going to hell because he's living forever, right? I just now put that together. He, you can't. Yeah. I guess that's his soul that is in hell. Were you offended that the artifact is Chinese in this? No, I, I, felt, like, I felt nice. Felt well, good. they didn't even look at the damn thing. They'd had it forever, and then they have to contemplate selling some of their treasures to keep the business afloat because he's fucking embezzling, or I don't know what he's doing. He's just broke, I think. He's just a, he's, he went woke. <laughs> so... <laughs> she's like, oh, what about this thing I have here? And then she's like, hey, you know, you know what? Sits on here to rub it for some wishes. <laughs> <laughs> and she does it, you know, like it. The, she starts fucking up immediately. Yeah. The thing, even that, though she she's a told immediately beforehand. Yeah, don't do that. That it's not a good idea. Was it the husband who said that? Yeah, it was everybody. But yeah, yeah. But she's like, no, let me uh, ask for some money. And <laughs> guess what happens? Yeah, her dumb fucking husband dies, and then. <laughs> And I love the guys show up and they're like, here's your dead husband. And she's like, uh, thank you. And then she's like, I wish you weren't dead. And he's like, ah, and they're like, we embalmed him, you stupid bitch. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, who ho, ho. are your jets? He's just writhing. Yeah. Why screaming. would I think that would have been a problem? That's like something I can forgive. I can be like, that's just fucking some loophole bullshit. That's total loophole bullshit to me. On well, she did say him. forever. I wish yeah. he, I want him to come back forever. Yeah, it's like she's just doing things out of emotion instead of sitting down, taking a breath. Yeah, thinking it through. Yeah, she didn't have time to uh, draft up a uh, loophole free wish. Yeah. There was that episode of the X Files. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember where there was a genie and Mulder spends like hours trying to write out a perfect wish to correct everything, like with loophole free and like all this like disclaimer shit. 
That was a fun one. Was that Will Sasso that played the genie in that? He wasn't the genie. That was a lady. It's a lady genie, oh, wasn't okay. it? Yeah. It's been so he long. He was in it. it no, uh, is there a loophole for you, Wish? Would is you? Is there any way around it? Would you, knowing what you know, make a wish if you encountered something that said this? Can you, I just say it's I for fun. something that's, that said uh, I, it, there would be dire consequences to my, my wish? Did it I warn? I wouldn't wish then. Yeah, it warned. Did it warn them in this there'd be dire consequences? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't but think they, they knew there were going to be dire. It just said you'll but, get but, wishes, but but you he did, know he literally refers to the 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 monkey's paw. The the husband does. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But when I they get it, I, I wouldn't if I if I was reminded of the monkey's paw. But what if it's like Aladdin? Yeah, I've made wishes. Some of them have come true. That's what most like people wish, who don't understand science would a be dream like. Is a wish that's proof. Makes. That's proof that wishing's real. I wish. I've wished for stuff. It's come true. I've wished for things that haven't come true. I don't know how you. I don't know if I could stop myself from just trying, but then I'll fuck something up. Do you do wishbones? I'll ask Anybody? for a big, massive dong. I do, I do but like I don't like, like how you have to wait for them to dry out. Yeah, you don't like to do a wet wishbone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, won't, it won't break. Yeah, I mean, we broke one at Thanksgiving. I mean, I guess it was dry. So, what do we got up next? Did uh, you say you'd wish for a bigger dong? Yeah, I was just joking because last week yeah. Friday was like, all right. It seems like guys always dong. ask they wish for bigger ding dongs that they'll give you like a five foot ding dong or something. Right. Yeah, can't even use it. They'll kill your father and give you his. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If I got a five foot ding dong and it was like a hostess ding dong, I wouldn't complain. Yeah, that'd be good. I'd be like, this is just as good. Thank you. Not in place of your penis. Thank though. you, Jeannie. No, just to eat. I like uh, sweets. What was the next one? Blind alleys. This one was the, oh. the home for the blind. This was a good one. Yeah. Uh, I spent so much time being worried something was going to happen to the dog because I couldn't yeah. remember if something did. It was a mean dog, though. Yeah. I don't like seeing mean dogs in cinema. No? You probably, you're, like, you're like, it was a no well trained dogs? dog. It didn't know it was being mean. It thought it was doing the right thing because it loved its owner. Beautiful German Shepherd. It was gaslit. Good dog actor. It got to eat a lot of ham. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is just an asshole who takes over. Uh, a, he's a penny pinching. Such a fucking asshole fop. He's basically. The Dandy movie thought. equivalent of the guy who said all the writers can starve out in California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like this is the, this is the guy. If he went, they sent him to run a blind home and he's like, well, we're not, we're going to give him the basic sustenance bachelor chow existence with no heat or blankets at night and make these men miserable who are already suffering from being blind and having to deal with all that comes with that. So this guy's pretty bad. Yeah. Um what was the name of the dog? Shane. Shane. Yeah, um dog's not to blame, guys, but yes, I did feel bad. And he's not he's not a steer on himself either. He's eating Oh, he's eating fine. He's eating good and drinking wine and all this stuff. Like it's the most disgusting fat cat yeah. behavior you can imagine, right? Yeah. Um I hate that like uh, I'm a leader of men. I led men in the war. I was in the army, blah blah blah. It's like fuck off, dude. Right. That's all. I just hate him so much. Like I deeply hate this character, and I know you're supposed to. Yeah, so it makes but it man, feel they good sell it. when they give him his comeuppance, which, which was a good comeuppance. It was. Um, they they mobilize when one of them dies in the night, and probably because of all this shit this guy's putting him through, it probably killed their friend. Well, sure. they have a. There's a guy, the, a representative of of the group, who keeps going and talking to the guy about you know things they need and uh and and he keeps getting rebuffed and given these goofy excuses so yeah then one of their buddies dies of the cold not not the common cold but of the temperature the lack thereof uh and yeah and then so all the the uh, patients decide to uh, get jiggy with it boy do they they, they go like it reminded me of um Freaks, not like saying yeah. black people are freaks. No, I know what you but mean. The, it, the style of come up and yeah, kind of like yeah. these uh, this group that you didn't think could be capable of something like this, giving somebody their uh, I love the word come up and uh, their come up and in, in this uh, 
this segment. Well, the, that's funny because I said to Amy when they started, like they're they mobilize and all of a sudden they're like the property brothers and they're they got yeah. all this wood out <laughs> and they're they're sawing and everything and they're cracking along like. And I was like, I hope that the government doesn't see this and take their benefits away. <laughs> that was like my first I said thought. Something like, I, be what did I say? Yeah. What did I say? I said something similar about like, wow, these, uh, I don't know what I said, but um, <laughs> what you said it. I'm, I'm sure it was but very funny too. It was. it was encouraging though to see uh, guys who uh, who have no vision uh, come together to build uh, elaborate, something. Elaborate, Jigsaw would be elaborate proud of. traps too. That yeah. was some, that was saw level for sure. Like they basically starve them. They the starve dog, they had the dog too. Yeah, in a separate like cell in the basement. And they starve them out, and then they create like a tunnel maze between the dog and the man. Yeah. And then when the dog's good and starving, they let him out. And I love that they create a funnel in the hallway that they line with razors. Oh yeah, yeah man. And, and then they black it out on top of all that, so Ooh. now he can't even see what he's doing. He's already cutting himself up. And I feel like that's, I just cut myself on a, I broke a glass washing dishes. And uh, this is actually a nice reminder of how bad this little cut, like <laughs> having to push through. Cause he's, he's faced with my dog's going to eat me or I've got to go through the funnel of razors. Those are your two choices. That's kind of what fucking great. He, yeah. And he's got to go fast. Yeah. Like there's no like way to finesse your way through it. Um, because the dog is right there. And so you're kind of, he's probably getting a little bit of both. Yeah. So Ooh. that guy's dinner. <laughs> I was just hope my, my dog would take a minute before. Not when they're that hungry. <sighs> it's hard car. <laughs> and then you get the wraparound finale. Where they're like, I got you, you evil bitches. Yeah. You're in hell. Have fun falling off into hell. A lot of those screams you hear in the trailer, which I was, when we were playing and I was laughing because there's a lot of this like, ah! It's just <laughs> like, one of, you know, people falling into the pit of hell. Yeah. It's a classic. Um, it is. We covered what is kind of the sequel to this, I think. Um, what? Was it called? Oh, no, I got to look. With Dr. Terrace. No, they did Dr. Terror's House of Horrors first, right? I think they did that before this. but um, So it's not a sequel. Well, a, technically Asylum and The Vault of Horror and From Beyond uh, uh, from Beyond the Grave. Like, this is a series of movies. They okay. just, they didn't call them, they didn't call them like Tales from the Crypt 1, 2, or whatever. It's actually, Amicus did uh, this the one prior, which I think we did Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, which is very much, and they all have the same kind of framing device right? with the, the characters who are part of the story or in the wraparound. But um, I love all of them. I think they're, they're awesome. And then Monst uh, Monster Club was like the last one they did, <laughs> which I love to death. They did change the wraparound in that one to do something really, I thought Dude. really original and creative. But yeah, uh, Amicus Horror stuff is fucking great. All right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, great choice, Kelly. I think this is a good oh, one. Thanks. Um, I think it's a good uh, fall time, Halloween time watch. Like cozy. It's cozy AF. I love yeah. anthology. A lot of yeah, and it's British on top of that. Mm -hmm. And from the seventies. You can't even what are you even talking about? What are you even talking about? Great tradition. It's a rare tradition. It's a rare tradition. All right. Well, do we know what we're watching next week? We do, um, but give me a minute because uh, i got to pull up the list. It's oh, coming. already? It's coming, it's coming. Well, then I will... Um, oh, here we go. Okay. Sorry. Uh, the Monkey's Paw from 1948. Ooh, we're going all yeah. the way back. I wonder what it's about. Hmm. <laughs> the OG. And then we'll be doing whatever our mailing list uh, subscriber, whoever wins that. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening at the end of every show, though. Mm -hmm. We say hi to the Beelzebubs. Go to patreon.com slash NOTLP to check that out. Elise. Oh, I'll see you soon. Alyssa. Brandon and Emily. Jeffel. I own a good one. All right. I own a great one. <laughs> 
Dr. Brian. Andy, you disappoint me. Brian, you do not. Uh, Bill, Bill's a poppin'. That's what we're calling you now. Uh, Bill Farner. Andy loves chocolate. Frosted Blakes. <laughs> Andy loves the chocolate. Plain yogurt. Jordache jeans. Paul. Jeremy, Cassie, and Gamora. Ernie. Dave Siebert. And Monica. Did you say Dustin on there? And Dustin. Poor Dustin just lost Poe. So sorry, oh, buddy. Kitty cat. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry to hear Dustin. about that. That's hard. I have to say, it's a uh, bad year for our friends in the chat. Like <laughs> yeah, it really is. Guys. Um, It just hurts because you love them. them. Yeah. Um, let's end this on a happier note. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. What's that? I love you guys. I love you too. I love you. That was fun. All right. Cool. Good job, everyone. All right. See you, you guys. Achieved. Bye. Bye. Frankenstein was wondering if he should go to bed When his old buddy Leatherface put on